Hello everyone. Tanika Breeding coming on. Yes, I am here. Come on in. Those of you who are available, I wanted to get on here and talk about how to end a relationship with dignity and move forward in your destiny. Move forward in your destiny and purpose and what the steps are what steps you can take to do that. Hello there. Hi, um, M Manhattan 2791. Thank you for jumping on. I'm new to Periscope. Uh, well, not really new, but uh, getting on here to move out of my comfort zone. I am Tanika Breeden. Hi, Yolanda. I am Tanika Breeden, and I'm author of Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now, a Christian woman's guide on how to get real, be healed, and move on from a dead in relationship. Hello, we are grown. Thank you for joining. Thank you for popping on today. And I'm here today to just talk about how to end a relationship with dignity. And when I use the word dignity, that, that's with your self-esteem intact. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for retweeting this. Much appreciated. And just want to hit some key points uh, quickly today uh, as it relates to love and purpose. Because if you've listened to any of my previous scopes in the last couple of days, love and purpose are not mutually exclusive. Um, in your romantic re re relationships definitely impact, impact how you show up and how you flow in your purpose and the calling of God on your life. And so if you're showing up one way in your romantic relationships, chances are you're showing up the same way as you're following the purpose and call of God on your life. And sometimes we get stuck in dead end relationships that derail and de delay our destiny in God. And so I want to give some quick tips on how to get out. And what are the, first of all, we're going to talk about the reasons. Thank you for the hearts. We're going to talk about the reasons why we stay in these situations. And as I look down, I am looking at my notes because I want to make sure I hit the high points. But first of all, we really got to get honest with ourselves and get honest with God. If you notice my handle is get real, be healed. If you want to be healed, what do you have to do? You have to get real with yourself first. And so that's being honest with myself and honest with God. And the Bible clearly says in John 8, 32, in John 8, 32, it's the truth that you know that sets you free. I say it's the truth that you know and do that sets you free. See, we know the truth. There's a difference between what we know and what we actually execute in our lives. See, there's a difference. We're more educated than we are obedient. Mm-hmm. That's right. So it's the truth that you know and do that sets you free. And so we got to humble ourselves. So when I, yes, amen, when I went through my dead end relationship and in this particular relationship, I had just been recently divorced. I waited a year before I dated. And then I got caught up with, in a relationship with the man of God. He was a minister. He was a pastor. And so that's a long story. If you want to hear more about that, get the book. It's available on Amazon and in Kindle and in paperback, obviously. But I had to come to grips with myself that this mess was not working. And, and so I had to look at how did I attract this dead in relationship to start with? And I'm looking at it and there are so many different layers to it. And I don't have time on this scope to get into it, but I had to look at, you know, he was the opposite of my husband that I was married to at the time. My husband was unsaved. Of course, he's a minister. So I deviated and went to the exact opposite thinking, oh my gosh, you know, ooh. And that was part of it. And then my own personal brokenness. You know, you attract, you don't attract that what you want. And I think this quote comes from James Allen. You don't attract that what you want. You attract that who you are. And so I had to really look at myself. I had to look at my belief system. Life doesn't happen to us. It flows through us. Life doesn't happen to me. My life flows through me. So I had to look at what is it that I'm really, really believing about myself, about God, and about love. Thank you for those hearts. What is it? My life is not happening to me. My life is flowing through me. And I believe that's, quote, that's from Shannon Tanner, one of my mentors. And so it's my belief system. What is it that I'm really believing? And you can use the word BS. Put that in the chat box. Your belief system is your BS. Hmm. That's right. And so you cannot outlive and you cannot outrun your own BS. If I believe this is my belief system, what is it that I'm believing about myself, about relationships and about God? And I can't change that. And I have to deal with what I'm believing. 
And so your belief system impacts how you show up in relationships. The reason why you get, amen, BS, your belief system, you cannot outrun it, you cannot outlive it, and you can't blame it on the devil or other people. It's what the Bible says, be it unto you according to what you believe. Amen. And so we have to look at what we're believing. This is why we attract dead in relationships. This is how we attract relationships that hinder, delay, and derail our destiny because we don't even realize the underlying belief system, our underlying BS that's attracting that type of a relationship into our life. Thank you. Thank you for those hearts. So we have to look at our belief system and also in Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, amen, thank you, so is he. And as he continues to think, so he or she remains. So it's all a matter of your belief system. This, it, this impacts our relationships, how we show up. It impacts our purpose. And so I want to go really quickly, and I am moving. We stay in uh, dead in relationships long past their expiration date. Um, when we know full well that it's time to end it, we, we fake in the in marriages and in these relationships like everything's okay when we know that it's not. And I'm not an advocate for divorce because I've been through that and it's a painful process, but neither am I an advocate for being in a miserable situation where you're faking and fronting and going to church and acting like it's okay and you're in separate bedrooms. That's that's not God's best and that's not God's will. I'm not an, I'm not an advocate for staying in a marriage that's emotionally, spiritually, mentally abusive and toxic and detrimental. God did not call us to that, that either. So for those of you who may be married, who may listen to this on the replay, I encourage you to get all the counseling and prayer you need. But for those that are not married, you already know if you're in a dead in relationship, the signs are there. The confusion is there. The, the issue, the underlying sense of anxiety, the lack of peace is already there. You already know what you need to do. And so the law, why do we delay in situations that hinder our destiny and that hinder our purpose in God? What are some of the reasons? Sometimes we just don't want to let go because we put so much into it. We've put invested so much of our time, our effort, our tears, our energy, our prayers, and we just don't want to give it up so easy. And so we stay in situations way past the expiration date. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pastor mm -hmm. uh, PG21. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tanika Breed, and I'm author of Get Out of That Dead in Relationship Now. A Christian Woman's Guide on How to Get Real, Be Healed, and Move On. And we're talking about the reasons why we stay in situations that that hinder and delay our destiny in God. And why do we do that? And so I heard this quote, I, um, excuse me for changing this, moving this phone. I heard a quote, don't cling to a mistake. Let me read it right. Don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a long time making it. Let me say that one again. Don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a long time making it. Mm. So we stay in jacked up relationships. We stay in these situationships because we've been in it for 10 years and we don't want to give up the time that we spent in it. I spent almost seven years of my life in a dead end relationship. We were not married, but because I stayed in it so long, I'm like, I got to put all this time in it. We've given up our bodies. We put in our finances. We put in our resources. We prayed and sweated. We've called those things that be not as though they already were trying to force fix, help, heal, deliver, set free another human being just to get married. All of this kind of stuff. And we don't want to give up the investment that we've put into it. And I would go as far as to say, what type of, what level of investment are you putting in your purpose? What if all that energy pouring over text messages, phone calls, going on Facebook and social media, scrolling and looking at the other, your significant other or your spouses, looking at what they're doing on social media, all of that energy spent doing that but it's not on God it's not on what God called you to do it's not on your purpose all of that sweat and energy that we're putting into a relationship if you, that's a key sign of a dead end relationship if your mind is so fixated on overthinking the relationship and pouring over the relationship that's a clear clear indicator that it's a dead end hi Osazi thank you for coming in thank you thank you for inviting the followers and so I have this here people are not just about the beginning of a, the relationship or good times they're about you have to look at a relationship in the context of the whole relationship so what I mean by that is if you've been in a relationship 
relationship for five years and the first six months were glorious, were wonderful. Just, oh God, you're running in the lily of field, field of lilies. But then the last 4.5 months of the, of the years of the relationship have been hell on earth, have been a hot mess dot com and a disaster. Then you can't just fixate on the early part and try to make up. See, this is what a Typically, us women, we try to fix it and try to perpetually get the relationship back to the way it was in the beginning. And you've been together for five five years. The first six months was were wonderful. The rest four and a half have been a horrible mess. Why do we keep trying? And see, we delay and hinder our destiny in God and our purpose when we do that. And so another reason why we stay in these relationships too long is that we just simply fear that another lucky person is going to come up behind us the hot minute we break it off. And somehow we think that that other woman, yes, yes, I've done this. We think that some other woman or some other individual is going to reap all of the benefit of what we've sown into that person. And so we keep, let me just hang on to this thing a little while longer to see where it's going to go and it's not going to go anywhere you're just going to keep going in circles in the wilderness in the desert waiting for that other person to get their act together amen yes it is the truth and so this is why we spend so much uh, unnecessary spiritual emotional energy and actual life force time years in a dead-end situation because we don't want another lucky person to get it and in the meantime our destiny in God is on hold. In the meantime, our purpose in God is being held up. God is looking at us like, come on, baby. It's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to level up and, and see this for what it really is and move on and move forward in your life. And a lot of times, another key nugget as to why we sometimes delay ending a relationship is just simply pride. It's just pure pride, plain and simple, because calling it quits means that I was wrong. And that was one of my issues. That was my issue. I hung on to a dead end situation for a very long time because my family saw it and I wanted to prove everybody that it, t that it was going to work out and that I made a wise decision and that I just didn't jump out stupidly, that the God was going to make this work and this was going to work. And everybody looking and I'm like, girl, you know, this stuff not right. Why are you still here? But we hang on because we don't want to be embarrassed because of our pride. And so I'm just here this, this afternoon here in North Carolina just to encourage you, those of you who may be on the edge, those of you who are in situations and you know it's not, that's right, pride. We don't want to admit that it wasn't God, that we didn't hear from God. We, we heard from our hormones. We heard from our fantasies. We heard from our feelings, our desires. We heard from infatuation. We heard from lust. Mm -hmm. that's right and it wasn't godly but there's a quote that I put out there what God ordained he will sustain and what God sent you won't have to chase mm -hmm. that's right and when it's God ordained there's no confusion it propels you it elevates you it accelerates you on your purpose it does not leave you in a state where you're perpetually trying to prove prove it and performing to maintain that relationship because we get into striving, we get into struggling, we get in proven and performing. I call it the proven and performing cycle. And going back to what I said in the earlier part of the broadcast, it is our belief system. It all boil, boils down to your belief system, your BS. You can put that back up in the chat, chat box one more time. BS. What is it that I really, really believe about life? What about God? and about myself and about relationships and about love because your belief system your belief informs your expectations your expectations inform your faith your faith informs your actions i'm going somewhere and your actions inform your character and your character informs your life be it unto me according to I, what i believe not the devil not my mama not what people said in church your belief system Life does not flow t happen to you. Your life flows through you. And so what is, what is your belief system? What is your BS that's keeping you in dead in relationships? What is the BS that's keeping you from flowing in the purpose of God for your life? It's pride. It's not wanting to let go of something that's messed. That's right. Belief system. Thank you for putting that up there, Osazi. And see, we, and like I said before, we cannot outlive and we cannot outrun our own BS. Mm. Yep, that's right. My BS, I can't blame it on anyone else. It's mine. 
Mm. So we cannot outlive it. We cannot outrun it. And so I encourage you on this broadcast this afternoon, you know, Isaiah 52, 2, and I am looking down at my notes, 52, 2, it says we must shake the dust off and return to our rightful place by right. Thank you. By rising up and getting back on our thrones as the men and women of God that we are called to be. And see, God, he's ready to move us forward. He's ready to heal us. He's ready to clean the residue and the baggage of dead in relationships off of our lives. But we have to make an intentional choice to do so. And there's also another scripture and I can't remember, but it says God gives us beauty for ashes. But first of all, we got to give up our ashes, our rightful place. And God is like, baby. I'll give you beauty, but you got to give me those ashes. And so we want to hang on to the ashes of the dead in relationship. We keep trying to hang on a little while longer to see where that thing is going to go. And it just ends up to another dead end, a destiny derailing dead in relationship. And so Isaiah 52, too, we got to shake the dust off and rise up to our rightful place. Shake the dust off that book that you still have, huh? unwritten on your laptop shake the dust off that business idea that you have in your head shake the dust off that ministry assignment that god gave you that you know you're supposed to do shake the dust off of everything that you've been holding back on waiting on that other person to get their act together and you know purpose is not see we keep waiting for some big long drawn out plan some detailed outline and it's like you don't need all of that you just go to god and say lord What will you have me do this day? What is it that I can do this day to point me into the direction, just to point the needle a little bit forward in my purpose? And you get your daily marching orders from God. It may be something simple like call this person, email that person, do this research over here. You don't need a a, a 15 page plan. Just get started. Do something. But most of all, get your belief systems correct. Thank you. Isaiah 61, 3, beauty for ashes. Give up the ashes so that you can receive beauty. Give up the ashes so you can walk in your purpose. Amen. Amen. It does not take a lot to start walking in your purpose. It takes takes a lot to stay in a dead end relationship because it's costing you more than you'll ever know. It costs you more than you'll ever know. I can't get those years back. I wasted seven, almost seven years of my life in this dead end relationship. I won't get that time back. The beauty that came out of it is this book that I'm holding in my hand. This is my beauty for my ashes right here. Mm -hmm. I got a testimony. I have a book that's going to bless thousands and millions of people. That is my intention. That is my desire. This is how I rise in my purpose. And that's what it's all about. And so I put this book back up here really quickly. I encourage you, if you are looking for clarity, closure, and the courage to end a dead in relationship, check out my book. It's available on Amazon.com. And if you are already out of a dead in relationship, or if you already are, you're in the mindset, and these guys are over here doing something, uh, making noise. But at any rate, if you're in the mindset of, hey, I'm ready to flow in my purpose, I hope you guys can hear me okay. If you're ready to flow in your purpose and you just don't, you need community, you need covering, you need connection, then just keep following me. Follow the link in this broadcast because I have some things coming down the pipeline. I'm affiliated with the Purpose Society and we're all about elevating, activating, and helping people get accelerated in their purpose. Those that are ready for that. So I have two things. If you're ready to get out of that dead in relationship, check the book out. If you're ready to flow in purpose, go to the link in my bio. And that's all I have. If anything has re- I said has resonated with your spirit, please let me know. Please share this. Give me feedback. Thank you so much for the hearts. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just share and just come on. My goal is to be on here three. Oh, it's frozen. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't know what I can do. But at any rate, um, hmm. let's see. Okay, thank you. I um. Looks like I got a good signal. At uh, any rate, um, I'm getting off. You have a blessed afternoon. God bless you and talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.